Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Rode Microphones. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robbo Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars. George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters. Voiceover talent and home studio guy. Right now, Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. This week we have a question that, in fact, it was an email sent to me by Toby Ricketts. He saw this on a forum on Facebook. There was a question posed, and the question was, when submitting demos to Peter Pease, is anyone here submitting 4824 MP3s? I've always assumed that this wouldn't work, as the internet tends to run on 44116. But since I work in 4824, it would be useful to know if this works. Some of the replies included, here we go, MP3s do not have a bit depth. It doesn't matter what your sample rate and bit depth are. 44.1 kilohertz MP3s are better quality than 48 kilohertz ones. MP3s Ah. automatically (laughs) convert to 16 bit. (laughs) So there you go. (laughs) Who wants to start on that one? What a murky Uh, I'll I'll say a few things really quick. Yes, MP3s are 44.1 or 48, and no, 44.1 is not technically better than 48. Technically, 48 is better than 44.1 because you get a little bit more frequencies, about, what is it, 4 hertz up there that you don't hear anyways, but it makes your really high frequencies not look like square waves and a little bit more like sine waves way up there at 20K. So I don't know specifically if MP3s are... Um, 16-bit, but I doubt it. In fact, I'm willing to bet they're 32-bit, actually, by nature. But I'm not sure about that. And what was the other one? The internet works at 44.1. That's... That's interesting. I don't think that's really true. <laughs> 40, yeah, 44.1, basically, for perspective, the way 44.1 came out was the record industry decides that they're going to use CDs, but at the same time, digital technology in general was burgeoning. And people could buy DAT machines at home that originally worked at 48K. And the record industry said, oh, no, we don't want people digitally copying our CDs. We would much rather have them double onto cassette tapes. So they made their own special, not standard sample rate, which is 44.1 instead of 48. So that then back in the day when you bought a DAT machine, you could pay $1,000 extra to get one that would do 44.1. but really, yeah, 44.1 was a scheme of the record companies to try to prevent copying of their materials. And now we're blessed with a weird sample rate. Thank you, record industry. And I believe AAC is 32-bit by nature, like within it. So I think there's a chance MP3 is probably also 32-bit, the way it works internally. But um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a weird question because if, you, I don't know, if you're sending an MP3 to a P2P site, you would just use whatever bit rate you want, I guess, or, you know, would it, Well, the, would the, it the first thing is, it's an audition, right? Yeah. So who gives a crap? Exactly. And then the second thing is, the 44.1 versus 48 is probably not the biggest thing that's changing the sound quality. Um, most software is going to convert between 44.1 and 48, like, practically, like, faster than you can blank. So that's not a big deal. I would say that most of the post-production industry, like the only industries I know of that work at 44.1 are the music industry when it comes to outputting for CDs, but a lot of music engineers still run at 48. And then the audiobooks industry runs at 44.1. Besides that, it's pretty much a 48K world. Yeah, I don't know if... It's possible Chrome and some other browsers are a little bit happier at 44.1. I'd have to look at that closer. That's a possibility. Yeah, 44.1 does tend to be more consumer in a way, um, yep. cause, just because of the legacy of CDs. Well, it's right, interesting. Right. I, I had someone, um, this is years ago now, when I, it was about the download speeds, and they were having some issues. So he got me to do a, to a record and send it across at 44.1, or 32-bit. 320, um, 320 kilohertz, or kilo, yeah, or kilo, kilobits per second. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, you got, yeah, it, I'll tell you, it's it's so easy for, for actors and anybody using software to conflate these terms because you can have 24 bit files and I've seen somebody mistakenly save their MP3s in 16 kilobit per second or kilobit per second. 
Yeah, because it's all awful. 16, right? And yeah. like, it sounds like garbage. I'm like, well, n- no, that's that's the bit rate. 16 yeah. is the 16 bit is the bit depth. And the problem is there's all these numbers that overlap. You know, you have 24 bit, but you can also have 24 kilobits per second. Then you have 96 kilobits per second MP3 and 96 kilohertz sample rate. George, do you yeah. want to explain them all? or, or how, No. How do you want to, I'll, 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 I'll take a gander and try to explain the three numbers. Okay, Robert, the three stick numbers. on the mad hat. The three all numbers. Right. The three yeah. numbers. Geek hack on. So uh, we'll, we'll start with the easy one, your sample rate. Your sample rate is how many times a second it's taking a picture of your sound. The higher the sample rate, the more accurate your frequency fidelity is. So you can, the higher the sample rate, the higher pitch the sound is that it can recreate accurately. And it's roughly half of the, whatever the sample rate is, you're capturing half of the that Nyquist. frequency. Right, the right. Nyquist so. feature. So 44.1 can capture at the most 22 kilohertz. But mind you, at 22 kilohertz, it's a square wave, right? So then you get all that high pass or low pass filtering to try to tame down all those crazy overtones that created are created because of that. So 48K can um, capture up to 24 kilohertz, thousand, yeah, 20, thousand, thousand cycles a yeah. second, which is well above what everyone can hear. Right. And that that already is like those extra couple samples up there make the high frequencies better at 48K. You start going into the really crazy bit, uh, sample rates that um, high definition music uses. You have 96, but you also have 88.2. 88.2 is nothing but double 44.1. And so now that can create a waveform that has a frequency up to 44 kilohertz, like way yes. the hell beyond. And some of these are like, you know, theoretical and people don't really hear the difference or you only need it if you're going to record birds chirping and then slow it down for some sound effects reason. Um, that might be a reason to record those really high sample rates or you're just an audiophile aficionado. Your audience is, are, is made of dogs. Yeah, dogs and <laughs> dolphins and, and whatnot, exactly. <laughs> So, so to speak, your temporal or time resolution is controlled by your sample rate. The higher the sample rate, the higher fidelity it is. Um, to give you perspective, something like the phone system, I think, is sampling at 3 kilohertz. Or maybe maybe it's, no, 8K. I it's, think it's, eight eight. Ki- it's 8 kilohertz, which gives you 4 kilohertz. Up to 4,000 hertz of, of audio. Of, of um, usable range, right? Right, right. So then the next thing is your bit depth. That's your 16-bit, 24-bit. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So again, for reference, your phone system, you're pretty much listening to 8-bit audio, real kind of early video game sounding stuff. The higher the bit depth, the bigger what's called the dynamic range, or how quiet of a sound can be expressed at the same time of how loud. Like the difference in in volume between the quietest thing it can record and the loudest thing it can record. So. A jet, airplane, from normal volume up to blasting loud is about 144 decibels, I think, or 100, or is it 120 is a jet, a jet? I think a jet is around 120. It's a logarithmic scale. It's, it's exponential. Like your ears are bleeding and now you're deaf loud. That's, that's the yeah threshold of pain is like 120 hertz, right? Yeah. Uh, 20, the, 120 decibels, sorry. Decibels, yeah. No, we're, we're confusing sorry, the numbers. Sorry. Yeah. Right, 120 Decibels is the threshold of pain. And certainly a cassette tape can't capture that. Maybe a record can. But the reason why the 16-bit thing came up because it was 96 decibels of dynamic range. It's usually pretty much uh, six decibels per bit of dynamic range that each that, that, that you get. So six times uh, 16 is 96, I hope. Right? Someone? Okay. Um, so that's... The CD just matches what the human ear can pretty much deal with. A little less on the dynamic range, certainly on the frequency range. It just perfectly boxes that in. That is CD quality, 16-bit, 44.1. In other words, up to 22,000 cycles a second in frequency and 96 decibels of dynamic range. The next thing is 24-bit. So 24-bit can do 144 decibels of dynamic range, which I believe even now the best analog equipment can't, can barely operate at that level. It's like essentially it's capturing everything and then a little bit more. Your jet can't, doesn't even have that dynamic range. 24-bit is the whole possible canvas in terms of dynamic range. So this is not a lot of extra data. 
and a lot of extra room. We've talked about this before, where you can record at a much lower volume in 24-bit and still get that same quality. Because if you're, I mean, there it is right there. And CDs do, or 16-bit does 96 kilobits per second. So if I was recording at minus 96, you would have one bit to describe that audio with in 16-bit if your preamp was set to minus 96 and only giving you that level. Whereas at minus 96 with a 24-bit, you've got at least 44 decibels of dynamic range still left to give you a usable waveform instead of some little Just square noise. wave. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Right. Um, so that's how much difference, like logarithmically, 24-bit is a huge amount of dynamic range. So bringing it back home, what does it mean to us? Probably for voice stuff and everything, definitely on the delivery side, 16-bit is good enough, but 24-bit is some not a lot of extra data and gives you a lot of extra space to work with dynamically so someone else can turn you up without you clipping it. I don't think anybody's ever going to hear the difference between 44.1 and 48 for the most part. But 48 is just a little bit easier to deal with because it is pretty much the format that most everyone will deal with in terms of post-production, unless you're working in audiobooks, which you do want to work at um, 44.1 at that point. I don't think that any of the high sample rate stuff has any place in the voiceover world. There's no need for anybody to record at 96 kilohertz or any of that. The last thing I'll say is 32-bit. And what the hell is that? 32-bit is a floating point numbering system instead of a fixed point numbering system. And what that means is that like 32-bit has a decimal place in it. It's 24 bits plus a multiplier or a scalar. And it doesn't really mean much from the file point of view. Um, really, ultimately, I think it might add a little bit of resolution because it is 32-bit. But really where 32-bit comes in more handy is when you're passing audio from one plug into the other. Because then if it's clipping, they just have to divide by that decimal point and they can bring it out of clipping. you, And, and you never really clip. Whereas with 24-bit, if you hit the top, there's no more numbers for you. There's no decimal place to play with, essentially. Mm. Mm. So... That's so next fun. week, we're going to talk about one bit <laughs> oh, oh. megahertz sample rate recording. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Single bit. Bit yeah, streams. Yeah. Tune in yeah. next week as Robert delivers the theory behind calculus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> direct, direct stream digital. You would throw that in there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm no good with the science behind it, but one thing I would add is that MP3 is not, in my opinion, is not a professional format. MP3 is a delivery format, but it's not a professional ah, format. Yes. Please don't, please don't right. give me your voice tracks in MP3 at any sample rate, at any bit rate. I don't want it at MP3. I want WAV. And I'm and, yeah, pretty sure that And let me put my geek hat back on. Back on. Yep. Because I, I only explained the two numbers. The last thing is the, is the bit rate. So not the bit depth, not the sample rate, but the bit rate. It's both, it's kind of, it sounds like both of them combined, but it has nothing to do with either one of them. What the bit rate is, is it takes the encoders, MP3, MPEG-4, all these things that take a lot of audio data and crunch them down to less data, is it says, okay, I've got whatever it might be, a window of time, 10 milliseconds of audio. And in that 10 milliseconds of audio, I'm going to use a certain amount of data to describe that audio. That's the data rate. That, that is your 320 kilobits per second or your 16 kilobits per second. How accurate of a picture is this thing that takes the audio and makes it less data? Because your raw data rate is just literally your bit depth times your sample rate. That's how much data it produces. 16 bits, 20 or 44,000 times a second. Multiply it out. That's how much data you have. And then the MP3 or the MPEG-4 job is to take that data rate and make it smaller without losing quality. So the higher your, your data rate, 320 kilobits per second, has more data to crunch that audio down into. The original 24-bit 48K wave file might have been 700 kilobits per second. And then you can take that and pretty much keep 90% of the audio quality and knock it down to 320 kilobits per second. This takes a lot of work of the computer, by the way. 
It does. Um, I don't yes. know if you've noticed if you've saved an MP3, then saved a wave at the same file, how much dramatically slower the MP3 takes to save. I remember when MP3s came out when I was in college, I had a 48633 PC, right? And MP3s came out and I was like, oh, here's how you make an MP3. And I ran the code and it was line, you know, DOS. And I encoded it and I was like, okay, let's go out for a while and see if it's come finished. Back, when I come yeah, back, 20 minutes yeah, later. Wow. Right? Yeah, that, and it, in, in, in 1993, it would take uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes to make sure. an MP3 of a song. Yeah. And what it's so, doing is it's yeah. figuring out what you can't hear and therefore, what it doesn't need to encode and what you can hear because, oh, there was a big bass drum at that moment. So you're never going to hear the hi-hat. I'm going to drop complex. the... It's complex. Right. It has all these... And it works within like windows of frequencies because it has these models as to what gets masked when you are hearing yeah. different sounds at and the same time. And not only do you lose a little bit of quality each time it's been encoded, it also... There's a little bit of an issue of decoding. Now imagine encoding, decoding, encoding, decoding a couple of times. The quality that that you lose really becomes way more audible. It almost like to me is like dubbing tapes. Yeah, you I was just gonna say. Of a tape of a tape, that third generation yeah. sounds pretty crap. Right. Um, and that's the same with MP3. And that's why it's so important to not save any production work in MP3. Only the deliverable, if that's what is required. You know, should then be made MP3 at the yeah, very, M very, M very end. MP3 is a consumer yeah. format for consumption. It's not a production format. That's the easiest way to say it. And you should be delivering WAV files. There used to be AIFF, which is the same as WAV. Yeah, it's the pretty Apple's much flavor. It's, it literally counts left to right instead of right to left. It's little Indian versus big Indian is what they call it. But huh. they're pretty much the same, the same quality because they're both what's called PCM or pulse code modulation. And that's right. how it encodes the 16 bits or 8 bits or 24 bits over whatever the sample rate is. Huh. Um, there is too much information. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you listen to this show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just record. It's safe in wave, cut in wave, normalize in wave, and then save again as an MP3 and send it off as your audition. That's what I mm -hmm. would do. In fact, that's what I do do. And try to use 48K unless you know that you need to use 441 for books or a client specifically asks for it. Yeah. Yeah, you can always transcode down and not lose any real quality. You can always record 24-bit 48. And then if they say, oh, we want 16-bit 44.1, you can transcode it. You can convert it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, just keep the wave file and you can do it from there. Yeah. And, and one other thing, actually, you, you, you might see options for dithering. Um, is that when you're indecisive think, and don't know what well, to read? But this show's very good at. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> dithering, right? Let Whoa! me think about that for a second. Um, yeah, dithering is a whole another <laughs> episode. Rabbit hole. We could talk yeah. about dithering and bit streaming uh, DSD next time. <laughs> yeah, single bit conversion. Oh, yeah, excellent. I better Google that. Yeah. Do you know how that works, George? No, but tell me next time. Okay. Ah, <laughs> I, I, I want to say. <laughs> Good night, everybody, if you're still awake. <laughs> well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite recorded using Rode NTG5s and Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Wizard. Help us share the show with more people and get your hands on exclusive content by contributing to our Patreon page. See patreon.com forward slash Pro Audio Suite. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say g'day, drop us a note at our website. The Pro Audio Suite. Dot com.